The three big cats we recognize today, the tiger, the lion, and the jaguar, are the three largest species of the Felidae, the strictly carnivorous mammals we call cats, and the fourth, the leopard, which is, on average, slightly smaller than the American cougar. Uh, the cougar itself is much more closely related to smaller cats, are all separated from other felids by their ability to produce a true roar. With the exception of the Amor, or Siberian tiger, a subspecies of Panthera tigris, which is one of the largest cats to have ever lived, these are not the largest or most impressive of their kind. Great cats, both closely and distantly related, have produced species more impressive than them. In fossil entry number eight, I talked about the saber-toothed cats, focusing largely on the most well-known, the Smilodon genus. Living at the same time, in what would one day become the continental United States of America, was a close relative of the living African lion and the Ice Age Eurasian cave lion, the prehistoric American lion, with the scientific name of either Panthera aegehox or if confirmed to be a subspecies, Panthera leo aegehox. The distinction between separate species and merely regional subspecies is not always clear and often subjective. That's a whole other discussion in itself. Let's take a look at these three different lion skulls on display. The largest is that of an American lion, and the smallest is the modern, still living African lion. Alternatively, some scientists deduce uh, from studies of uh, dimensions of the skulls that the American lion was not, uh, not closely related to true lions uh, in Asia and Africa, but more closely to uh, jaguars or tigers. The skull in the middle is the cave lion. Cats emerged as a distinct group among carnivorous mammals at least as far back as 25 million years, uh, beginning with the, uh, with, with the first uh, felid, the earliest felid uh, we know of so far, Proilurus, which lived in um, Europe and Asia, uh, Eurasia at this time. At some point, many millions of years later, both big and small cats came to North America later South America. In South America, the saber-toothed cats uh, and either the jaguar or ancestors of the jaguar clashed with the last of the forest rachid species. The forest rachids in South America had reigned for nearly 62 million years, and by this time there was only one species remaining. In North America, Big cats such as the still extant cougar, the American cheetah Miracinonyx, the saber-toothed cats, and the American lion established their reign and clashed with apex predators such as both gray and dire wolves, large bears including the short-faced bear Arctotus, and eventually, when they too came, humans. The mega lion, as some call it, Panthera leo atrox, grew to five feet high at the shoulder and up to seven to eight hundred pounds, though some have now re-estimated the more common weight of adult males to be between six hundred and seven hundred pounds. This would put it within the same weight ranges of the larger individuals of the saber-toothed cats, Smilodon fatalis and the even larger Smilodon populator, as well as the largest tigers today, though a bit smaller than the peak of what Siberian tigers can grow to. In most ways, it was otherwise similar to other lions, both the living species and the Eurasian cave lions, with a greater size and twice the bite force of the African lion species today. Yay. These would have been adaptations needed to tackle the megafauna herbivores of the Pleistocene, as well as make it a formidable opponent for its competitors. Now what's interesting is that this lion was similar to the saber-toothed cats living alongside them. Large and robust, 
built for ambush and short bursts of speed, more suited for taking down massive prey animals than most modern big cats, with maybe the exception of the tiger. The fact that, in this time period, we find so many different large predators built like this reveals to us that the Pleistocene was a time of abundance in North America and in much of the world, in that ecosystems could sustain such vast numbers of large prey and giant fierce predators.